The Lindy BNX60s are among one of my favourite active noise cancellation headphones purely because they're comfortable and they're relatively inexpensive and I'm sure a lot of people who've tried them would also agree with me in this respect. Now here I'm reviewing Lindy's newer revision, it's the BNX80 which claims to potentially be a successor and if not a replacement for the BNX60s, at least in my opinion. Now the headphones are a little bit pricier than their siblings, whereby in the UK they can be found for around £89. In case you're interested, the links in the description below will take you to your localised Amazon stores, and also down there you'll find some alternatives, including the BNX60s. Now before proceeding with this video, if you do like this review, and of course want to see more from the channel, definitely do subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get notified as soon as videos do go live. And furthermore, I'm on social media, so for example, you can give me a follow on Instagram and Twitter if you like, and again, it will give you another means of keeping up with my shenanigans. And furthermore, if you're interested, in keeping up with the latest news or reviews of all electric or hybrid vehicles, definitely check out Total EV. I'm essentially reviewing a new car every single week. So to kick things off, let's talk about what you get in the box. You've got the headphones themselves, which we'll get into in just a bit, and you've got a hard shell carrying case. Now inside what you'll find is a micro USB to you, um, USB cable, and uh, you've got an airline adapter, a quarter inch uh, jack as well, and you've got a silver plated 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. And we'll touch upon this in just a bit in terms of the audio quality, but essentially, as you can see, it's got a straight line jack on either side. Now onto the headphones themselves. As you can see, the headphones do fold um, within itself and they can also fold flat, which is nice in terms of the adjustments that you've got in terms of how you want to uh, take them around, be it in the case or let's say in an oversized pocket or a laptop bag. There's a right and left indicator found within the ear pads, which is very handy for you to tell which one is, well, left and right. The pads themselves, the ear pads are very soft and cushiony, so there's no issues in terms of um, comfort when you're wearing glasses. Um, however, there is a relatively strong clamp force, which is one of the complaints I had about the BNX 100s. And in comparison to the BNX 60s and some of its competitors, I feel that the clamp force is just a little bit too strong. Now you could potentially try and open up the clamp force if you were to put a set of books in between and just leave them open for quite a while. But I just wish that these were a little bit more comfy for indoor use. If you're gonna be using on runs, I don't see them falling off your head. So that's a plus point. Now at the top of the um, headphones you've got nice soft padding as well and it's nice to see there's quite a substantial amount of padding which means that the, um, the plastic type of design doesn't dig into the top of your head. Now the headband is adjustment, uh, has got adjustments as well which is nice and you've got this kind of metallic or should I say aluminium um, um, headband design and then you've got the Lindy and BNX um, 80 uh, sign uh, printed on the side. Now it's got this kind of smooth design, this um, plasticky design, it's fine in an all black color, I couldn't find it in other color options and I've not got any complaints over here. It actually very much is reminiscent of the Sony uh, WH-1000 um, XM3 at least in terms of the design standpoint, not in terms of the material used. Now in terms of the uh, controls, it's pretty intuitive. You've got play pause buttons um, on the left hand side and you've also got um, skip and previous and they also double up as volume controls and also an on and off button uh, for the center button which is also the play pause button. Now there's a micro USB um, port uh, input um, and it's a shame not to see USB type C given this is a modern device. It seems that they've resorted this to the BNX 100s. There is also an on and off ANC, which is separate from your on and off of the, um, of the headphones themselves. And this also does impact in terms of battery life. Now, speaking of which, if you want to use the headphones with ANC only, with no music playback, basically, you can do so uh, via enabling the ANC toggle. And of course, you can use them passively via the 3.5 millimeter jack input. And this will result to around 92 hours of playback time, at least according to Lindy. 
as for if you were to use it with wireless with no ANC you'd get around 50 hours and if you were to use ANC and Bluetooth you'd get roughly 35 hours which is all very impressive and given uh, Lindy's claims I actually put them to the test and I found them to be relatively accurate so they're, they're really good in terms of long lasting um, headphones if you want to use them on long commutes. Now with that out of the way let's get on to recording quality and everything you can hear right now is coming directly from the headphones. What I will say in terms of call quality that it's perfectly acceptable however if you're going to be in a noisy environment what you'll find is the BNX 80s do pick up a little bit of environment sound and aren't able to cancel out your voice versus what you get here around you. If you're going to be in an office environment then the BNX 80s will be perfectly acceptable and in terms of the call quality it's again pretty acceptable for the price point that the headphones are coming in at. Now just for comparison here are the Bose NC700s which are among one of the better sounding headphones when it comes to call quality and hopefully you'll agree with me to say that the BNX 80s really can't compete with more flagship headphones or ones which have got a kind of class leading audio quality when it comes to over the ear headphones. Now moving on we've got ANC performance. Now while these headphones won't compete with the likes of flagship headphones in terms of its price category I'd say it's among one of the best active noise cancellation headphones that you can find on the market. It's able to cut out a good degree of low end tones and in terms of environment sound where you are treated with let's say mid range and high end tones as well, it does a very competent job. I think this is also aided with the fact that it's got very good passive noise isolation so therefore combining with the active noise cancellation feature as well you're essentially getting a really good experience specifically at the sub £100 price tag. Again, it's all put into perspective that if you were competing with, let's say, sub £200 headphones, then the ANC performance is still relatively on par, but still not as good in the mid to high frequencies. If you compare it to flagship headphones, here you know, the headphones really can't compete on the whole when it comes to cancelling out those harder tones. So what I'm trying to say over here is for the price, I think Lindy have done a fantastic job. Past that, we've actually got sound quality. Now here the headphones connect over Bluetooth and have also got the 3.5mm jack. Now all my assessments were done over Bluetooth but of course I did test it in terms of its 3.5mm jack performance and I can safely say that the audio quality is definitely improved over its auxiliary input because here you feel that you've got a little bit of a clearer sound stage that's got a little bit better instrument separation that is you've got a slightly more forward mid-range and the bass is a slight bit more controlled. However, I am reviewing Bluetooth headphones and specifically comparing them to other Bluetooth headphones on the market with ANC or not. And in this respect, all my sound quality assessments were done over Bluetooth. So bear that in mind. Of course, if you've got questions, of course, ask me down in the comment section below. Now when it comes to Bluetooth technology, they connect over Bluetooth 5.0, which is nice. However, it's really a shame to see that these headphones are limited to the SBC co codec only. You don't have AAC or you don't have the APTX codec, which is actually seen in Lindy's cheaper headphones or some of its competitors, which come in at a roughly the same price tag. It would have been nice to see the APTX codec in integrated because not only do you get increased audio transmission but it also reduces the fact of any sort of latency problems. Now I didn't have any latency problems, I have an Android smartphone, more specifically the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. I had no problems with the SPC codec with these headphones when it comes to lip sync delay. Of course, your mileage may vary. Now the lack of codec support does affect the overall sound quality, so let's break it down in terms of each of the sound frequency bands. First off, in terms of the sub bass, these headphones have got a decent low end extension. While it's not super pronounced and doesn't really extend in the lower echelons of bass tones, it is still very much present and you can definitely hear it. In fact, I would say the headphones have got a bit of a V shaped sound signature, and as a result, here the mid bass actually comes out pretty pro predominantly. It's a little bit uncontrolled, specifically over Bluetooth, as I just mentioned before, in comparison to the wired transmission that you might want to use. And in this respect, the mid bass just doesn't come as eloquently as I might expect. As for the mid bass, it is pronounced and therefore it does leak into the mid range and therefore the lower mids are very much pushed back. This also does come into effect if you were to enable ANC, which further pushes back the mid range tones and actually almost smooths out a little bit of the mid bass and the highs as well. 
So again, something that you should be kind of mindful about. As for the upper mids, they're decent. Again, a little bit pushback with that V-shaped sound signature, but at this price point, yet again, very much acceptable. As for the highs, they do extend, they do tail off at the top end, so you do hear, hear a little bit of roll off, but there's plenty of excitement at the top end, at which point you won't be left with kind of a dull sounding headphone. The Lindy headphones over here are definitely not something that I would consider as dull or boring. They very much excite throughout the frequency range. And as the sound stage goes, I do feel they've got a closed sound stage, it's quite intimate. The instrument separation isn't as good, and this could be also due to the fact of the lack of codec support. The aptX codec could have helped in this domain, and something that you really do notice when you're comparing with aptX headphones or non-aptX headphones, or even with the headphones with the different set of codecs. And in this respect, I feel that the headphones just sound a little bit, well, not muddled, but it, it just could have done with a little bit of more width and depth. And the same could be said with terms of the breadth that you get in the music. Again, it just feels a little bit claustrophobic, which isn't great, but again, at this price point, it's acceptable. But I just wish that Lindy had basically done a little bit more, given the BNX60s are very similar in many ways to the BNX80s sound signature. Ultimately, this leads me on to my verdict. Here I find that the BNX80s are a little bit of a catch-22. On one aspect, I really like the call quality for its price and the ANC performance, while on the other, I'm just not too fond of the stronger clamp force that these headphones have over the BNX60s, and in comparison to some of its competitors, they don't offer the same sorts of um, codec support and or the sorts of sound separation that I would expect for a set of sub £100 headphones. Don't get me wrong, they're very good. I just would personally prefer the BNX60s as my go-to budget Bluetooth ANC headphones. And if I wanted something a little bit more premium, I'd go for the Philips PH805s as a worthy alternative or competitor to the BNX80s. So that's just my thoughts and opinions about it. I'll be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And of course, if you liked this video, give it a like, subscribe, favorite, share, and all that good stuff, as it always helps the channel grow. Alright, I've been totally dubbed. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.